Hey everyone, it's me, Gretchen Rubin, um, co-host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. And in a minute, I'm going to be joined by my fellow co-host, my sister Elizabeth. Um, but while I'm adding her, I want to know where are you watching in the world and what is something that you are hoping to get done today? Um, let us know in the comments because it's so fun for us to see. So now I'm looking for Elizabeth. Um, this is always the moment of challenge. Um, and there she is. She's joining. And Elizabeth is coming in. So tell us where you're watching from and what you want to get done today. Here it's connecting. Yay! Hi. Hey, how are you, Elizabeth? I am good. Gretchen, you may want to do this. Oh, do I? It's my fate to have lipstick on my yeah. teeth. Is it gone? Yeah. This is why it's nice to have your sister. <laughs> I'm like, only your sister can say that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, let's see. Oh, yoga practice. We're, I asked everybody, what is it that they want to do? Where are they in the world? Somebody wants to unpack a box. Mm. Oh, South Australia. That's Ooh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. What time is it in Australia and New Zealand? Um, Great question. Oh, Ontario? Is it, is it tomorrow or yesterday? That's the question. Yeah. Rotating my daughter's toys. That was always something I aspired to. It clearly sounds like a smart idea. Yes. Never did it. Um, Ooh, Bermuda. That's nice. Looking to get a bar workout done. Oh, wow. This is Someone great. else says they want to mow their lawn, which um, seems good. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Paint uh, a room. That's ambitious. Yeah. Oh, Chris Gillibo is watching. Hello, Chris. Oh, hey, Chris. Hello, Chris Gillibo. Um, yeah. It's, uh, in fact, we, I think... When is our interview? We've done a couple interviews. He's got a new book that just came out, The Money yes. Tree. Yes. And I think that's coming up, so that's fun. Oh, prep garden beds. Um, that sounds like a very peaceful, happy thing to do. Gretch, uh, someone's asking if that's an ancient Mac behind me. Uh, here. Yes, it is. That's Adam's. People uh, love your Mac. It's I know. You should, like, put it under a glass case or something. I know. It's, it's an antique. That's fun. Um, oh, Istanbul, Turkey, Gretchen. That's oh, great. Oh, Kansas, that's near our hometown. Um, if you're just joining, I'm Gretchen Rubin, and this is Elizabeth Kraft, and we oh. are the co-hosts of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. And Elizabeth, I know a lot of people are saying how they want to do something that's exercise-related, and I wanted to share what I thought was a great hack um, from Patty, um, because, of course, one of the things we're always talking about is trying to exercise regularly. Yes. And so Patty says, I've always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail. That's that is a major undertaking. In 2019, when I realized that I probably won't be able to hike more than a few miles of it in the foreseeable future, I decided to hike a virtual Appalachian Trail. I found a website where you can track your miles and determine exactly where that takes you on the trail. I calculate steps for all the exercise I do in a month, oh, in a week, and convert them into miles. I mark the map and take a screen capture, saving, saving it in a weekly log file. I also locate the spot on Google Maps and screenshot views that other hikers have experienced. It's been so fun. That's so such thought, a good idea. This is like, because if you're, if you're safe at home, um, this is a way to kind of give yourself that sense of forward movement. Um, I looked to see what the name of an app is. The one, one that I found was the Walk the Distance app. I suspect there might be other apps, maybe if there are viewers who have done something similar. Um, and that's such a great use of Google Maps to use yeah. the um, to, to use it as a way to kind of give your imagination, um, you know, a setting. Yeah. And so we want to hear from other people. What are you doing to exercise? We have oh, look, oh, someone says they've done walk 20 and 20 every day. That's and, fantastic. And somebody said they're doing it right now. Excellent. Gold star. Fitbit has this virtual hike trails as well. That's great. Um, Gretch, uh, I saw a really fun thing online. Jim had this huge chalkboard, and for A, B, C, D, the whole alphabet next to it, they wrote, like, 20 push-ups, 10 jumping jacks, a minute plank, all different ones for every letter of the alphabet, and then it said, spell your name. Oh, and you were supposed to do whatever was next to the letters of your name. I thought that was so fun. Yeah, but then it's like you wish you're named Ed, not Catherine, right? Well, yes, I looked at Liz, not Elizabeth. For one, that's right. Me. Yeah, you got a little flexibility there. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, but that is fun. I mean, I think anything that kind of gamifies it like that can be really fun. That's what I like about the Appalachian Trail. Also, the thing about hiking the Appalachian Trail is it, it is kind of like a a bucket list thing. 
And so yeah. this is a way where you're like, you can achieve your goal kind of in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, or like, uh, or, or also give you the feeling um, of being outdoors, even though you're really indoors. Um, a lot um, of people are doing Zoom classes, exercise classes with friends. See, that's great. Yeah. What and I know great... there are a lot of online classes people are doing. Oh, somebody likes the chalk wall idea. That's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting how people are. How many people feel, give a thumbs up if you feel like you are managing to consistently get some kind of exercise? I give myself a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Myself. Yeah, I definitely am. Although I will say I'm not going like major sweating. I'm I'm yep. walking, but I'm not like really pushing myself. Right, right. Um, well, a lot of it is just the movement. I mean, and that's one of the reasons we have the hashtag walk 20 and 20 where people are walking 20 minutes every day. And the research shows that you get a big boost pretty quickly. Like you do mm -hmm. not have to be exercising at the outer limits of your strength and your, uh, uh, you know, what your possibilities to get a big boost. So this is definitely an area where I think it's better to get it perfect, to get it going than to get it perfect. Yeah. Because, um, and to be, and to be consistent and realistic. When you have a treadmill, listen, have you been using your treadmill a lot? I have been using it a lot. Um, my favorite thing is when I can talk on the phone or do a Zoom hangout and walk on the treadmill, because then it's almost like it's not even happening. See, that's what I love to do now is I'm yeah. trying to, I just emailed somebody today being like, do you want to have a phone date? So and yeah. I'll go for a walk then. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I've been doing is listening to some of my favorite podcasts um, yes. on the treadmill that have nothing to do with um, COVID-19. I've been listening yeah. to Bitch Sesh. Yeah to uh, The Bachelor Happy Hour, yeah, yeah. you know, some just things that I love that are just completely different. Oh, you know, another um, Housewives podcast. Yeah. Okay. So I want to ask people about podcasts. I have, do you have a podcast that is like your comfort listen? That's like your, your, you know, your macaroni and cheese podcast. And have you done a thing where you go back and listen to episodes that you've already listened to? I am going back and listening oh. to old binge mode episodes oh. because I just find it very soothing. Like I love Mallory Rubin and Jason Concepcion. I love the stories they're talking about, like Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. And I don't even have the suspense of like, I've heard them have these conversations before. And I, I think that I like that even as much as listening to new episodes of podcasts that I love. It's somehow more, um, it feels more comforting. This but is I'm nice. also a rereader and a rewatcher, so I think that's something I do. But I wonder if other people do that or no. It's like you go to your, you want new episodes of your favorites. This is nice, Gretchen. Several people are saying that Happier is their um, comfort oh. podcast. Oh, well, that's, that's nice, nice to think. I would love to think that. Someone else says Conan O'Brien needs a friend. I need to listen to that because everybody loves that. Oh, ha uh, Happiness Lab Satellite Sisters. That's yeah. another one I listen to. Yeah. Uh, on the treadmill because I love the Satellite Sisters. Yeah, 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 yeah. As someone uh, else said, Satellite Sisters. Yeah. Uh, currently reading podcast, Lazy Genius. Oh, for me, it's happier that. Yeah, that's so nice. Um, oh, um, the uh, I have a friend who I think I mentioned this on the podcast. She's like a really scared flyer, and she was she had to fly by herself. You know, usually she's with her family, mm. and it was really turbulent. And so she said she turned on our podcast because it was like I was sitting in the seat next to her. And I love that idea um, that, um, you know, it, it does make you feel like you have comfort. Um, sometimes I'll listen to binge mode at night. Uh -huh. um, now, this is something I'm sure everybody knows about this hack, but I only fairly recently discovered it. If you're on an iPhone, at least, if you're listening to a podcast, you can do something um, about with sleep timer. So it will automatically turn off after 15 minutes, 30 minutes, so that it doesn't keep rolling forward. Because sometimes it's like you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, there are 10 episodes ahead or whatever. Yeah. So sleep timer is really nice to, to do. Um, so do you, but, I, but I'm curious, I bet even more than podcasts, I bet people are trying to pair exercising with friends. Give us a thumbs up if yeah. somehow, whether it's the Zoom class or the phone call, or what is it, are you trying to pair exercise with social time or social engagement. I will often call mom and dad when I'm going mm -hmm. for a walk. Um, yeah. I, I think that's a, a really, that's that's a win-win. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and I actually did a hangout. Um, so I had my iPad on the treadmill yesterday. I was talking to Sarah and our friend Kareen, and Sarah was also on the treadmill. So we were both walking, um, and that was fun. Well, that's funny because on the Happier in Hollywood uh, podcast that you guys have, you have that the the segment called "From the Treadmill Desk." So. And we were literally yes, we oh, were on the treadmill desk. Well, it's like it's like it's not just uh, you know you you what, what do you you put your you know you you live it. Um, yes, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. Walk the walk. Oh, somebody's on a walk right now. Um, that's great. Oh, and listening. Um, Oh yeah, on my morning walk with my dog, I listen to the New York Times the daily. Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. Um, yeah. A lot of times, people do that. Um, I think a lot of dogs are probably. I, I mean, thumbs up. <laughs> Living dog the life. Is more exercise because everybody in my family, I'm like, you got to get out. You got to get light in your face. I don't want you getting claustrophobic. Like even like Eleanor will work out with like a video. I'm like, you got to get outside. We can go outside as long as we stay very far apart from other people. It just feel like you got to get fresh air. You got to get sunlight. Yeah um so you know we don't have a yard um the way you do with the and so um yeah like, having a yard is adam has been doing um because he's still working from home and he he takes most of his meetings outside even in the pouring rain he's been sitting under our little shelter and like he'll be in a coat a hat all bundled up pouring rain but he's out there okay are you taking a picture of that i really I should you need a picture okay, of that for your picture. Show. okay <laughs> now but what are people struggling with i mean what are the challenges um because this is a time when people when it's disrupted um when maybe your kids are home um you, yeah. you, you're, you're not in your usual what are people um you know, what, what are the challenges? I think for a lot of people, like there's some things where, you know, you have your, your instructor that you love, or you have your class where you see friends or, um, it just kind of works in your schedule. Like I, I drop my, my, my child up at school and then I go do this. And it's like, well, now that that's all disrupted, it can be hard to like fix, um, insert yeah. a new routine into it. A lot of people are saying anxiety um, yes. and snacking. I think those two often go together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, dealing with a to toxic coworker, even from afar. Because you think like, oh, at least I don't have to see this person, but they're still like, they're still toxic. That's hard. Yes. Um, I'm getting anxious because of loads of alone time. Well, that, yeah. that is hard. And so I think it is really helpful to actually like make these phone dates Jamie and I did what you what you did, Elizabeth, where we had like we had met for a drink with another mm. couple, and at eight thirty we sat down. They did not have the they did not think about how like they didn't have it set up. They they were each independently doing it. Oh, and we're uh -huh. like, why don't you go together? And yeah, then they, and then they couldn't figure out in their their how they're very untechnical. And they could, I'm like, you guys need to think this through so you can be next to each other because they were trying to do it from the the husband's office. But there was only room for one person to sit, oh, and and fun. it was just yeah. it was like comical. Um, so oh, someone um, is saying that their kids arguing and fighting. That, I think a lot of people yeah. are are struggling with that. A friend of mine texted the other day. She's like, "I just locked myself in the bathroom, yes. you know, to hide from my fighting kids. Does Domino's deliver to the bathroom? Right, <laughs> right. Which I just slip it under the door." Yeah. Um, Who's got suggestions about that? That's a great one. Who's got suggestions about um, fighting kids? Um, is it, you know, give them alone time? Is it, is it, I don't know, like what it, my daughter, my children are almost six years apart. So they didn't really fight in that way. Um, and you and Elizabeth, you and I, Elizabeth, we didn't really fight that. I mean, we fought well, like we a were, yes. car trip we did. Yeah. But, um, we were far enough away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gretch, I know a lot of people with small businesses and restaurants are obviously feeling a lot of anxiety and stress. I wanted to show you today, I'm wearing my um, cafeteria t-shirt. It's my friend, Joe Marie Scaglia, it's oh, her Joe restaurant Marie. in um, Kansas City. And I wanna shout out all the restaurants out there who are doing curbside pickup, which Cafeteria is doing. And I, it's a great restaurant. I highly recommend it for the Kansas Cityans out there. But of and course, Joe doing... Marie also has the mix. 
Yes, the mix where Love we go mix. every time we're home. It's walking yeah. distance from mom and dad's apartment. Yeah. Um, so, she, yeah, shouting out the mix, shouting out cafeteria, shouting out everybody who's got um, a local restaurant, wherever you are. Um, let's all, you know, we're all cooking or my version of cooking a lot, but um, ordering into or doing curbside pickup. Yeah. It's a strange time where like you can order your favorite Chinese food and have it delivered and like yet you can't like sit next to somebody on a park bench. I don't know. It's it's <laughs> odd. Um, but I think a lot of people were really reassured. I know I was by the, all the articles saying actually food delivery is yeah. safe. And yeah. it is really great um, for those businesses at a time when we're so concerned about lots of businesses. That's a, that is something that you can do. Um, no, that's true. Um, that's Someone's saying they've ordered coffee bags from small roasters. So that's good. Supporting those uh, independent coffee shops. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And then somebody I know um, another thing that you can do is like if you have to do a necessary errand, you could go to a local store instead of a, a big chain. So like if you have a like in, where I live in New York City, there's a lot of kind of independent like, they're like indie pharmacies, you know, they're mm. just like family pharmacies. And then we have the giant chains. And yeah. so for some things like these giant chains, basically, it's like practically a Walmart. They have everything. Yeah. Um, but for some things, I could just as easily go to the little local one. And I really want to make a point of that because they don't have all the resources of the big chains. It's just one family having yeah. a pharmacy. So to go out yeah. of the way. To um, that end, Gretch, today I went to the farmer's market by our house, Tapia Brothers. For wow. And more people. And carrots and, and things and were people standing far from each other and being yes. careful yes and um i also ordered a book from pals this morning great yes yes um oh speaking of books and speaking of children fighting i should mention i will post a link to a blog post that i did with a list of my favorite parenting books mm. um if you need parenting thoughts and one of those books is called sibling without rivalry um, by who are the same team that wrote my all-time favorite parenting book, which is um, How to Talk to Ch Ch Kids Will Listen, Listen So Kids Will Talk. So it's Mazelish and I don't remember the name of the other author. Maybe somebody watching remembers, but it's made. But the name of the book is Siblings About Rivalry. How to Live um, with Your Children So your so You Can Live Too or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Couple of uh, interesting comments. Someone says for their daughter's Easter basket, they're going to shop local businesses. Someone else was asking, yeah. are we using cash? Um, I use a credit. I'm trying to use a credit card. Uh, everyone agrees that's a better, better method right now with payment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Favor and Mazelish. Favor. Thank you, Favor and Mazelish. I cannot recommend uh, their books highly enough. That, those, a favorite and Mazelich and Michael Thompson are my favorite. But anyway, you don't need to remember this because you can go to the blog post and it's all written out there. Um, but oh, thank you. There must be a lot of people who are favorite, favor and Mazelich mm -hmm. fans because everybody's like <laughs> immediately answering. Um, um, so yes or no, um, are you having troubles? Are your sleep patterns disrupted? Yes or no? Are you staying up too late? Are you going to sleep really early? Are you napping a ton? Um, are you waking up in the middle of the night? Are you, that's what's happening to me. Are you sleeping incredibly mm -hmm. late? Um, what, you know, are your sleeping patterns being affected? Or do you feel, I feel like now my sleeping, I feel like I'm kind of calming down now. Actually, mm -hmm. last night I did wake up in the middle of the night, but, but I had had a couple nights. I think I've sort of my vigilance and everything kind of calmed down now that things are more kind of predictable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Staying up too late. Well, listen, I think you have a challenge related to people staying up too late. Yes, Crutch. One of our, you know, try this at homes for Happier in Hollywood, we're bringing out. Um, and this is the set, um, a, set an alarm for bedtime. So just today, which is something small, we're not saying you have to do this every day the rest of your life. Although you this can. is just the daily challenge. Uh -huh. Daily challenge, day. something small today. We thought for those of us who are staying up too late, and my main reason for not wanting to stay up is that then I snack. So that's not good. Oh. So um, I'm going to set an alarm tonight for 11. I've been going to bed usually at midnight, but if I go to bed at 11, I could definitely decrease the snacking. So um, 
the, anyone who wants to join me, set an alarm tonight if you're staying up a little later than you want to. Oh, someone says they did set an alarm. Oh, good. That's um, great. Well, uh, uh, anyway, again. and so uh, try that and see if it helps. I'll try it and I'll report back. I'm going to set mine for 11. Well, one thing, I mean, just to talk about the, like, the sleep research, it does seem that you're better off kind of sticking to a schedule. And so it's better to kind of try to go to bed at a normal time and not have a lot of variation in when you go to sleep. And also waking up at the same time, tent, like that tends to give you better sleep over the long run because then it's sort of set. There's also a lot of um, power in morning light. And so mm. if you're up and you're like, I know, Elizabeth, you have a very light kitchen and a light kind of yeah. TV room. So you're up and having your cup of coffee and watching CNN and you're in you're seeing a lot of morning light if you're going out to you know yeah. outside to do something that's really valuable um you you know you could even use a snooze alarm because just like we need a snooze alarm to go to to wake up maybe you need a snooze alarm to be like okay it's 11 and now okay i'm gonna i, I need a little bit of time to like get myself organized and like start moving towards bed and it's gonna go off again and remind yeah. you like, are you in bed are you in bed um Someone's asking what time I wake up. Um, well, in normal life, I wake up at 6.45 in the morning. Um, today, I set an alarm for 7.45 because I was like, let me get up so that I'll be, you know, yeah. wanting to go to sleep. Right. So I'm thinking maybe I'll try for 7.30 during this period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so who wants to make this on their accountability? Like we're going to do our accountability check-in in a minute. Um, which is, you know, we're holding you accountable. If you need yeah. to be held accountable for something, whether it's exercising or reading or working on your cover letter, you know, polishing your resume, going to bed on time. If you want to add this and have it be part of the accountability roundup, um, say so. And we yeah. are asking everybody, check in with your accountability, write in what you're going to be accountable for and give yourself a gold star right now. If you have done, maybe it's walk 20 and 20, um, Elizabeth, yesterday our challenge was to clean a drawer for yes. itself. Give us a gold star if you did that. Um, and I will say I did clean off my desk or my version of cleaning off my desk. It's still got a lot of stuff on it, but I mean, it's all stuff that I've chosen to have on it. Well, that's good. Yeah, we'll put it in the comments because it's so fun for us. To, oh, yes. People are saying yep. yes. Um, a lot of gold stars. Uh, well, it's interesting. Somebody said, you know, maybe this is a habit of going to sleep that we can relax a bit at this time since schedules aren't as regimented. This is a great question. And I've thought about this a lot with my children. Like, should I just let them kind of, Eleanor's still on spring break, so I'm just letting her do whatever she wants, I decided. I do think that for most people, and I'd be curious to know if people agree. Like, give me a thumbs up if you agree. And maybe, and maybe this isn't true for everyone. I, I, may, it may, I bet it is different for different people. I like basically going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. It makes my life feel orderly. I feel like I sleep better. Research suggests that I probably am sleeping better. Um, when you stay up late, you do start doing things like snacking and you're not snacking on celery sticks. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. you're not the only one. Like some hu huge percentage of the total food that Americans eat is, con is, is consumed after 8 p.m. So there's a lot of reasons. But for me, it's basically like I like the regularity of it, but that's me as an upholder. And I think maybe for some people, they really would kind of like, it might make them feel like, gosh, this would be something fun. Like, this is one thing I can do. Like, I can't yeah. do this. I can't do that. I can't do the other thing. But if I want to stay up until 4 a.m. and then sleep till 2, I can't. You know, if that makes you happier, yeah. you know, I'd be, I don't know. But I think for a lot of people, the schedule it kind of, it's the, the, it's the most basic aspect of our routine. And I think right now, a lot of us are trying to establish routines. And of course, if you've got kids that are in school, or if you have work responsibilities, you know, that yeah. you have to log into, maybe you don't have that freedom, but then some people probably do. Let us know in the comments, because I'd be really curious to know um, how people feel about this. Um, oh, well, one person's going to work on French every day. Jamie should do that, because he's supposed mm. to, be, he's working on his French. Oh, Gretchen, I need to, to help you unpack some boxes in my office. Oh, my gosh, I would love to do that. I would love to Some people are saying that it's um, they're waking up a lot during the night because of yeah. anxiety, so therefore they're sleeping later in the yes. morning, which makes sense. Yes, that does make sense. Um, one thing that is one of the things that they kind of recommend um, that I've tried with great success is if you've been, if you've been in bed for like 20, 30 minutes and you're not falling back asleep, you're actually better off getting up 
and kind of puttering around, not reading, not watching TV, not like, you know, checking your phone, but maybe tidying up or, you know, sorting through a pile of mail or, you know, folding some laundry or, you know, puttering. Um, and they say for that getting up and doing that for like 20 minutes and then going back to bed often helps you go back to sleep. And I have mm. to say, so often I don't want to do that. I'm like tired enough that I want to yes. go to bed, but then I stay awake. If I can force myself to get up, um, a lot of times it really does seem to work. So just anecdata, it does work for me. So it's where it's, where, oh, here's somebody created a shelf. Somebody's giving the thumbs up. Yeah, this is great. Um, Someone else oh, cleaned their desk. Yes, this is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All for the consistent bedtime, yes, yes. Well, I think a lot of it is children's too. Routine self, yeah. Um, oh, I see my best too, Liz. Somebody said that's so great. Someone else says getting up and stretching in the night. Helps. Yes, that's a great thing. I stretch. I also put on lotion because being a little cooler mm. can help you go to sleep. And so I feel like at least when I put on lotion, it kind of cools me down. Um, but I think stretching is great because it's just enough exercise and it kind of, it does kind of, release that energy mm -hmm. i mean sometimes i will turn on the podcast that i that i oh and i think i mentioned the other day the sleep with me podcast which is uh did i mention that or yes something? i think so yeah because and i like to listen to side hustle school because i find yes. chris's voice very soothing well and they're all very kind of hopeful optimistic yes. stories i feel like it's all just it's sort of like what did who would have ever thought you could make a living giving chocolate tours of London or whatever yeah. it is. And it's just like, yeah. it's like, it's sort of fun. To, it's enough to think about. Um, but it's not like, I, I feel like I need to leap out of my seat and make a list of my own chocolate tour for London. Yeah. I'm like, well, let somebody else do that. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, somebody said, um, at first we were feeling like it was almost vacation, but we're trying to stop staying up so late. Well, you know, mm. I think a lot of people have talked about this kind of snow day feeling like that. It, this is not a snow day. Um, this is life. Um, it's, it's not a vacation. It's life. And that's hard because in a way you do want to kind of get the benefit of like, this is an opportunity nobody wanted, but for some of us, not for everyone. And we want to give a shout out to the healthcare yeah. workers and the essential workers, transportation workers, that are yes. near hand, like all the people who are doing all that essential work. But for some people, it is kind of like, how do we use this time? Well, um, which is part of like the accountability check-in. If there's something that you want to get out of this time, we want to help you do it. We'll give yeah. you a gold star. We're checking on you to see if you're following it. Um, and um, so the challenge for today is the bedtime, bedtime alarm. alarm. Not an alarm for your bedtime. Yes. Yeah. So maybe I should set mine at like 1045 for your point about the snooze button. Well, what time do you actually want to have like your head on the pillow and the light is being turned out? um well let's say eleven fifteen. okay that sounds reasonable that's you know an hour earlier yeah oh has somebody been. mentions the headspace app um that's great um i bet that if you know of any good apps that help for sleep i think this is something increasingly um people are yeah. doing um but um okay good so we will check in tomorrow we'll be back at the time of 4 p.m eastern 1 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. Yeah, and that's the rest of the week. And that's the rest of the week. Um, a reminder, um, April 1st, we'll talk about Love, Loss, and What I Wore um, by Eileen Beckerman. Yes. Yeah, oh, there it is. Yes. Um, I read it yesterday, Gretch. I got, I, one of my accountability was doing a half an hour of reading, and I, I read this whole book. Yes, if you, yesterday, a lot of people were, or the other day, a lot of people were saying that they were finding it hard to read, they were finding it hard to, um, to concentrate. And so I think this is a book that can help get you back in because it is so manageable. And I also wanted to let people know that uh, tomorrow at 1230, I'm going to be doing an Instagram live with Random House, Penguin Random House, which is my publisher. Um, and so you can look to see where the links are for that. Um, and that'll be fun. And I'll just be talking about, um, uh, you know, how to be happier, healthier, and calmer during um, COVID-13. Uh, it's 1230 Thursday. COVID-19. Yeah, what did I say? COVID-13. Oh, COVID-13. 13 is <laughs> the unlucky number. 19 also an unlucky number. It's at Random House is the uh, handle. Um, and that's at 1230. And the information is in my stories if you want to um, look that up. So please join me there. That'll be fun. 
Um, so there it is. Yes. Yeah, let's keep our hands clean and our minds clear. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.